Now we've considered the literature in relation to osteoarthritis and PMF. We're going to go on to look at the final part of the puzzle, which is how we actually go on to use this um, in the clinic and how this is all relevant to us. So really we're thinking about how can we use PMF um, as part of an overall treatment for osteoarthritis. So let's just first have a think about the um, the downward cycle, if you like, of osteoarthritis. So we'll have a think about what happens first and then we'll have a think about how we can use a PMF to help us break this cycle. So with osteoarthritis, let's just say we have an initial point of degradation. So this is where we see clinical signs, um, where there are some changes within the joint. Now, actually, in reality, there are lots of um, precursors to this that can feed into this point. But for the sake of this lecture, we're not going to be looking at those. But let's just say, pick a point in time where we have degradation, we have some changes that happen in the joint. Now what happens from that point is the pain in the joint is increased um, and so is the inflammation. So we, we settle into a chronic inflammatory cycle and we also have pain within that joint. Now what will happen there is we will have a decrease in movement. So if the joint becomes painful and inflamed, the animal is going to reduce their movement. This might be um, a global thing, so actually reduce the amount that they move around altogether. Um, if it's a dog, it might be less time getting up out of their bed and moving around the house. If it's a horse, it might be less time moving around the field, um, less active when they're, when they're out and moving around freely. But we can also think of very specific to that joint. So we can move on there to think about a lack of movement or reduced movement in the specific joint. So that will reduce the range of movement of that joint. Okay, and along with that, what we get is a reduction in strength. So if they're moving around less and they're using less range of movement, then they will start to lose strength in those supporting muscles. And they will also start to lose proprioception um, and their movement um, patterns will become disturbed and this all of this puts the joint makes the joint more vulnerable what happens then is we get a reduced joint stability and we get reduced function so when we lose the strength in these muscles um, in the supporting muscles the joint becomes um, unstable um, and it slips and slides around on its surface which is very bad so exercise osteoarthritis is a positive thing if we get compressive forces. So if we have a nice strong joint, sorry, strong muscles supporting the joint, we can keep that joint in alignment and correct um, biomechanic function, then when we load that joint properly, then actually exercise is a positive thing for osteoarthritis. If we have an unstable joint that slips and slides around, we get shear forces on the joint, that leads to further degradation. So we don't want, we want a nice supported stable joint. And also function. So we're gonna, if we're losing um, range of movement, let's say that's gonna be a downward spiral, the joint capsule is gonna become thickened, less elastic, um, and all of the things that happen within the joint, um, the synovial fluid will become uh, thicker, um, more viscous and you know basically the function of the joint starts to grind down a little bit to a halt um, and then that leads back to further degradation okay so just to clarify then we get degradation in the joint which means we have more pain more inflammation less movement reduced range of movement reduced strength reduced proprioception that which then leads to reduced joint stability and reduced function, which then leads back to degradation. And we go round and round this cycle as the patient worsens and worsens. So what we want to do, we want to flip these the other way then. What we want to do is we want to see a reduction in pain, a reduction in inflammation, chronic inflammation. We want to see more movement, more range of movement, more strength, better proprioception, which will lead to better joint stability and better function. And then, so what we're going to do, if we introduce 
PEMF. So what I want you to think about here and what we're thinking about now is using PEMF as part, as I've said in previous lessons, um, previous tasks in this lesson, PEMF as part of a multimodal approach to osteoarthritis. Uh, the treatment of osteoarthritis with rehabilitation. So PMF, I would not use necessarily, or neither I would with any electrophysical agent, as just on its own. Okay, We're looking at a multimodal approach. So if we can bring PMF in here to try and help break this cycle, so we get the initial degradation or we get some clinical sign that the animal's got osteoarthritis, if we bring in PMF at this stage, we can hope then, so if we think back to the lessons where we looked at pain, um, we looked at uh, all the um, underlying cellular and molecular changes um, that have been shown to, to happen under PMF treatment, uh, we can think about all these things that we've targeted. So when we think about a reduction in pain then, either through the, the primary mechanisms or, or the secondary responses to that, which we've discussed in a, in a previous lesson, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, if we see a reduction in pain, then that's great. If we can see that the inflammation is, PMF is helping the body to modulate that inflammatory process and um, for it then to act accordingly, that's great. And all the other... Um, all the other uh, benefits that we've looked at, such as um, you know, increase in uh, vasotone, uh, more fresh blood, more nutrients, more oxygen for repair, all of the things that we've covered in previous lessons come together here. So if we think then we're going to reduce the pain, we're going to bring in PMF, that's going to reduce the pain and reduce the inflammation. Now, there on its own, it will increase movement. Um, anyway, so even if you only use PMF, and don't use anything else, you're going to get some benefits. You're going to get some increase in movement because this animal is going to feel less painful, there's going to be less inflammation, and they're going to be more keen to move around. Um, but if we can bring in exercise rehab at this point, so again, looking at this as part of a multimodal approach rather than just a one-off uh, treatment or a treatment of its own, we can bring in exercise rehab at this point, then we can attack all these other things. Now, this is where it's very useful, PMF, because you have cases that have just ground to a halt, like I say, they're painful, they're, we want to get them up, we want to get them moving, we want to get them going again, but they're in pain, there's inflammation, um, and it's easier to work with these animals, or it can be, if you use a modality to help them modulate that pain. Um, obviously, they might be under the vet already for pain medication, but if we can use this as a treatment modality as well, um, we can bring it into the um, treatment plan um, and address it right at this early stage. But then if we can get that under control a little bit and get the animal feeling much more comfortable, if we can then use this window of opportunity to try to address the other problems that have happened with this case, um, like the lack of range of movement, the lack of strength, lack of proprioception. If we can now use this window of opportunity whilst they're having PMF treatment, we're going to be able to increase their range of movement. We're going to be able to increase their strength and their proprioception, which is going to increase their joint stability. It's going to make that joint a lot less vulnerable than it was. And it's going to improve the joint function. And therefore, we're going to stop or we're going to sit, we're going to halt or we're going to slow down this cycle, this downward cycle of osteoarthritis. So that's how we're going to be thinking about PMF using it as part of a multimodal approach. So let's just have a look at how we could actually use that in practice then. So with our osteoarthritic um, cases or our geriatric cases, you can see this dog, this is Romy. Romy was an elderly Labrador, um, about 12, I think, 12 or 13, he was in this picture. You can see that he had um, has hit a problem with his stifle. Um, we've got no stifle flexion there. You can just see by the way he's sitting that he's an arthritic old boy. Um, and so what would you do with a case like this? These are very common cases that you'd see. And these are where I think I find that PMF is a very useful treatment for these uh, cases. So you would be looking at at least six weeks of PMF and three times daily if possible. Now, I say six weeks. Um, and We've looked at the research, so we know that the, the um, 
parameters and the lengths of the studies that we've been looking at. Um, and But anecdotally, using this in practice for many years, and I know other people would agree as well, it tends to be that four weeks doesn't seem like enough. There's a benefit and everything's going in the right direction but I've found if you stop at four weeks then you can slide backwards whereas if you carry on for six weeks that's normally ample to get to a point where you want to be able to um, to be able to move them forward and they're much more comfortable at that stage now that's uh, that's anecdotal Um, we've gone off the research what we know and it's all very um, subjective but just from personal experience that's what I find is very useful so we would use uh, six weeks of PMF three times daily, I put here, just because if we can, then why would we not? Um, so just thinking about the practicalities of that, the reason why three times a day is quite easy, easy to deliver for cases um, that are these elderly geriatric cases is because the way that PMF works and why it can be so good for these cases is it's so easy to use at home. So there's this little bed in the background here. You can just lay them out on top of the bed and as he's laying down, have these rests, which he's going to be doing quite a lot, um, he can get his treatment. Um, You can put uh, a very thin blanket over that so they don't even know it's there. I mean, you could, in theory, put the uh, PMF mat under this mattress let's say but um because it it will penetrate through the mattress it won't be stopped by the mattress however the further away you get from the applicator the less dose you have so it make more sense to have it on top with just a thin blanket over it if you wanted to hide it so they're not so suspicious um and so you know obviously these arthritic cases would often have a very thick bed Uh, So just to bear that in mind. So the practicalities of it, as long as the owner is at home, um, obviously three times a day if they're not at home in the day, but they've got to be coming back for this dog to to let this dog out, or somebody is going to have to be doing that at lunchtime. So six weeks um, of this treatment three times a day, it practically is very easy to do with these cases, um, very achievable. Now, you might ask, should this be a lifelong treatment? Um, In these chronic cases, yes. If you can, then yes. So it would be better if these cases or the owners of these cases purchase um, a PMF, a piece of equipment to use every day for the rest of the dog's life. That would be better. But that's not always possible. They're expensive and sometimes that's not possible. So if that's not possible and this is something that you are doing, you are renting this piece of equipment to them. So this is another reason why PMF is a, a useful modality in practice because it As far as revenue is concerned, um, it can be very useful because you can purchase this equipment and rent it out to owners because it needs to be done every day at home. And it's very safe to use at home as well. So you could be renting this to them and they can rent that uh, from you and do that six weeks of treatment. In that time, the dog will improve enough that you can have some carryover of that. Now... If we have carryover, and then, you know, maybe in six months' time, do the same treatment again, or whenever it is needed. So we know we can have some carryover this, but what is going to really increase that, just going back to that last slide that we looked at, is to take a multimodal approach. So we're going to use the six weeks of PMF, and we're going to then um, bring in other things to use that window of opportunity whilst the animal is having the post-electromagnetic field therapy to benefit them and to increase the carryover and the benefit that you see from using PMF. So let's just briefly have a look at a different end of the spectrum then. So this horse had early onset hock osteoarthritis. So if you just glance quickly at this picture, you might not see that much wrong, but if you look a little bit more closely, you're going to see some more Um, signs that we've got some dysfunction going on here so this horse is quite upright in the hocks Um, you can see that he's not he's standing a little camped under he's not keen to stand out behind um, a stand-up square with a leg at each corner here he's a little bit camped under because he's guarding um, all these areas so the horse uh, a horse because of the reciprocal apparatus we've got hock osteoarthritis it's going to limit the movement all the way through the limb certainly through the stifle which has a knock-on effect to the hip um, and to the sacroiliac joint lumbar sacral joint and all the way through the horse so um, they're very connected this way so 
you can see then that we've started to get some gluteal wastage for this horse. Um, there is some wastage in front of the sacroiliac joint. Um, and we're starting to get a bit of a lordosis of the spine, the posture's deteriorating, and you can see that his um, triceps are very well developed, um, and his forearms, he's starting to use his front end to pull himself along. So if you look a bit more closely at this, you can see this horse is in two halves and not using his hind end as a power that he should be. Um, so we've got the poor posture, poor movement and the muscle imbalance. So again, if we interject here with six weeks of pulse electromagnetic field, um, and I've put one to three times a day here because it is more difficult with a horse to deliver the treatment, uh, because not more difficult, but you can't just lay it down on a mat and then say lay there and, and do that. You have to apply an applicator with wires up onto something that's fixed um, around his girth. Um, to hold the machine in place and you really don't want to leave them unattended because they can kick them off and bash them against the wall and do all things that horses do. So it's expensive equipment to leave them unattended. So practically, if they can, owners can do it three times a day, great. If they can't, then once a day, at least once a day is, is worth doing. So that's the practicalities we need to think about with horses. Um, Carry over. Now, with these early onset cases, you can get that carryover um, because they start moving better and it can unwind itself and you can, it doesn't necessarily need further intervention. Um, and would this case need to have lifelong treatment? If you had a machine and you owned it, why not? But I don't think they need it. If you can, if you can get everything moving better again and the joint, the, the hocks are functioning as they should, then they should it should halt the, the disease, um, hopefully, and you know you get this horse in better posture, better balance, you should be able to address that and hopefully that will hold for quite a long time. But certainly if the owner has a machine, then why not be using it if you've got hock osteoarthritis or any other osteoarthritis. So in summary then, can PMF help with osteoarthritis? Yes, it can. Yes, it can, because it can, it, it can reduce that inflammation and pain. Um, if that's all it does, then it's going to have a beneficial effect because the animal is going to move better and hopefully unwind that downward spiral. Can just PMF help? Yes, it can. So if you can only use PMF, it's still worth doing. It's still worth doing because the natural movement of the, the animal should improve and they should move around more, which is only beneficial. However, what is best practice? So in summary, best practice, best practice is to use it as a daily treatment for weeks. So would I just use this as a one-off treatment? Probably not. Um, it needs to be used regularly for a longer period of time and used as a part of a multimodal approach, which includes exercise rehabilitation. If you take that in mind, that's how you're going to get the best results with this treatment.